Wait, what? Oh, what? <laughs> Stars. Stars, are we out here messing around? Are we throwing fireballs in a match like this? I mean, and the Super Ultra Bomb? What? Stars, this feels like a big risk. We also have one of the biggest matchups in Clash of Clans Esports today as we go into Anarchia. Anarchia taking on Navi today. And let's also keep in mind that this is a golden ticket competition to get into the World Championship of Clash of Clans. This is the final round of the upper bracket. Now, if they win this round, then when we get to next weekend, when they actually play for the golden ticket over next Saturday and Sunday, then they will get a first round buy. These two teams, because of the performance of the previous matches, have already secured their spot into the top six. But let's see if they can get that first round by here. Pato making his way past the base here with the Electro Dragons. A pretty clean sweep there with the Overgrowth locking out the back end of the base. And overall looking pretty solid here. The Queen steps through, gets the wall broken, gets the Inferno down. Will then be able to reach all the rest of the defenses here. Step her way in, and it is a triple. Look at the tack time on that one. If they got to move fast here, then this is exactly what they needed. This is a minute and 10 seconds so far. we got to get over to this Poison Tower. Going slow here. He drags it, try to get into it. And one minute and 20... One minute and 21 seconds for Padalino. So did you guys see we started a new YouTube channel? We're playing Raid Shadow Legends. And after almost five years of playing this game, it just seemed natural that we start to make some guides and share what we've learned. And thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. I know Raid is technically an RPG, but I like to think of it more like a puzzle game. I have over 800 different champions that I can use to solve the puzzles, and it's just a matter of finding a way to piece them together. Raid Shadow Legends is celebrating the arrival of Spring in Teleria, and with it, a special Spring hunt mini game go to springhunt.plarium.com to participate in the event where they're giving away a bunch of free gaming consoles and amazon gift cards worth ten thousand dollars new players who use my link to download raid will be hooked up with two extra epic champions that will definitely start any account off on the right foot and if that's not enough raid is also celebrating community weeks where Everybody, new players and old, can get Chronicler Adeline, who is a Sand Devil Specialist. You definitely do not want to miss this champion. We also have a new promo code, SPRINGHUNT24, that'll also be able to be redeemed for a bunch of extra in-game goodies on top of everything else. And if you want to play with me directly, then join One High. We are recruited right now. We'd love to have you. There's not enough time in this short segment to explain everything I love about this game. And that's why you need to make sure you download it from the link in the video description or the pinned comment, and then pop over to my new channel and we break it all down there. Thank you again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video, but let's get back into it. Pete Castro in for Navi. It is going to be Looks like a Rewriter attack. Anybody saw that coming? Uh, I, I wouldn't have guessed it. Rewriters in from the right side of the base there. King and Queen, however, go to the very top of the base there with the Golem. And then a jump will carry him across there. Really good value that they're able to find with the heroes, with the King and the Queen and the Golem. And they're able to consistently grab that. And it just it just sets up the pathing for the Rewriters. But it doesn't just set up the pathing. It does it like on the fly. It does it while they're moving into the base anyways and he just forms the funnel as he moves you know so that way the heroes are able to clear out the left side the root is able to clear out the right side the siege barracks funnels them on the outside of the base there also provides cleanup and then he can make his way to the core of the base there the root arrive and the world champ is right there with them to assist them with the town hall takedown not that they really needed extra help right there but with the world champion kind of go after the bigger defenses here it seems to be that she's staying nice and protected in the core of the base they're not really under any threat at all the queen Taking her time getting through some storage is up top there. Delayed for a little bit, but the king is able to move his way forward there and was able to provide tanking. And now the world champion is easily going to sweep her way through these. She's got her ability. She's got the hog puppet and the haze file. She can quickly surge down to the bottom corner. I feel like he needs to hold it until he can get her to take advantage of her movement speed across the base here. Get it done faster. He'll pop it right there. Hog puppet will spawn. She'll get those done. And then the hogs will turn right back around into cleanup. Warden as well. And it looks like he's got it 100% under control here, guys. Easy, easy pick up here for Picastro. However, it is slower than the opening Electro Dragon attack from Padalino. So it is going to be a 15-second advantage into Anarchia's favor. 
The next sneak peek for our next update to Clash of Clans is going to give us a new level to the Eagle Artillery, a new level to the Monolith, and a new level to the Clan Castle, which will make so that you can now have a capacity of two siege machines, so you have a little bit more variety in what you can store. It doesn't change the gameplay. It would have been nice if they actually added some extra troops on there, but they didn't. However, we got a new level to the Builder Hut, and we got the newest and most powerful addition to our lineup of pets, and that is the Angry Jellyfish. Let's see it in action here with the Warden using it with a fireball. Now, this new pet makes so that the hero that it's attached to is going to attack only defenses for the first, when max level, 35 seconds after the deployment of the hero. At low levels, it's like 25 seconds. So, the Warden will now, or whatever hero you attach it to, will then immediately start to target defenses. So, we can see that we use a fireball there to immediately get the fireball deep in the base. And I could have even got it further in the base there if I was using something like a couple of invisibilities to remove the targeting of some of those buildings and look how much of the base they were able to take out there with just the Warden. One Rage to give the healers a boost there. And now the healers are alive. The Warden is alive. And he's ready to join and contribute a Rage Gem into the rest of the army. That's the Angry Jellyfish. Very OP. Now let's see if Anarchia can sustain that time advantage. Gotta move fast here. No mistakes. More Rune Riders. Couple Valkyries. Heavy on the Super Barbarians. You only bring in four Valkyries. You... I assume have to put them right with the main group right there. They're there. Just a couple of them. I'm light on the Valkyries. Usually I go heavier on the Valkyries when I use this attack. But looks like he had the Siege Breaks deploy very early into the right side of the base there. And it didn't seem to last very long. Didn't seem like a... Did he manually... Uh-oh. Did he accidentally misclick and manually open his Siege Breaks? I mean, I guess he gets the two Pekkas. I'm pretty sure he popped it manually right there. That's going to... Really hurt his cleanup over there. Gonna remove all the wizards that he would have normally got into that area. That's gonna cost him some time. That's a lot of troop space just swag right there. But the war champion makes a rage over to the right side of the base there. She's kind of struggling as well. I'm concerned right now, but not concerned enough to think this would not triple still. I think he's still fine on that front. And he seems to get the cleanup uh, engaged over to the right side. He's moving over there. And he's... Oh, Road Champion! Road Champion goes down early! Alright, alright, that's gonna cost him more time. This Road Rider needs to get the wall open right here. He needs to get this wall open to get the Queen through so the Queen can finish the job there. The Queen needs to stay in position. Road Rider steps through and wall, wall, wall is open. Barely survived long enough to get the wall open and prevent him from attacking a wall for the rest of the attack here. Looks like the Queen will step through. We've already used her ability. Running the Healer Puppet. The Healers are tagging behind her and it looks like she'll get the job done. But yeah, that definitely cost him some time there. I, I have to wonder how much time that would have potentially saved if he didn't have that misclick. But let's look at that again. I want to see how long it was on the field there before he manually opened it. He had to have misclicked it here, right? Let's see. Let's fast forward. Fast forward. Right there. Oh, jeez. Did he even get the P.E.K.K.A.? He didn't, he didn't even get the Pekka's. Oh my god, he got nothing out of it. He literally dropped it. And then immediately opened it. Oh, he's lucky he still tripled. Oh my goodness, that was a big mistake. And that really, really cost him. I didn't even realize he didn't have the Pekka's. And now Klaus will try to take advantage of that slow attack. And if he can get one on pace with that open attack there from Anarchia, then we could see a shift to the lead here. But look at this. Look, look how Klaus drops in his Siege Bricks and then doesn't immediately open it. And then it spawns two Pekkas and a bunch of Wizards instead of just going to complete waste. But he does put in the World Champion immediately up into that top quarter. While he's got the model under control there, or really not really that under control. Now it's under control there as he has skeletons drop into that area there. The War Champion goes invisible and the main force goes right down the gun of the base there. Running the defensive CC as a double ice golem and a dragon. We're seeing a lot of people switching over to that specific CC. That and the super dragon seem to be the two most popular to try to get people to have mistakes forced when they're trying to rush their attacks. And... It sometimes works and often doesn't because 
These guys still just completely just level these bases and walk right through it. But he, look at this. He's going to take out the whole base here before the overgrowth wears off. There it is. Overgrowth wakes back up. Single Inferno locks on. Multi Inferno trying to do damage, but he'll freeze the splash damage. More freezes on standby. Freeze again, and the base is gone. And look at the attack time on that one. Klaus locks it in in a minute and 14 seconds. And I think that swings our war. I think that puts it in Navi's favor. It does indeed. Five seconds in the favor of Navi, 10 seconds total. So we can see our other upper bracket match happening right here. That is going to be also for one of the other top seeds into the next phase of the tournament between Millsim MG and Synchronic. The other matches you can see on your screen are all from the lower bracket. They will also be trying to take one of the other two spots that these upper bracket teams do not. So the only teams that are currently confirmed to make it into next weekend are Navi, Anarchia, Synchronic, and Millisim MG. Everybody else is going to have to fight it out for those last two spots. We'll see who ends up making it through, but a giant arrow shoots across the base here for Bernal. Giant arrow with the healer puppet, just lining it up there to shoot through the core. And he got a couple buildings down with it. A couple battle builders relieved, or reduced, I guess just getting some early damage. I'm trying to justify why we use a giant arrow here over anything else. But I guess if he wants to pop off a giant arrow and shoot it through the core of the base there, then Without an invisibility vial, he gets all the damage front loaded right there and gets the healing as well. And you got, you got to find it like you're going to run the healer puppet and you want to have those healers spawn right away. Then it makes sense that you run in a piece of equipment that will get value right away when you pop it. And the giant arrow makes a lot of sense in that situation. Over, Roar Champion struggling over the right side of the base there, taking a lot of damage. Already lost their Spear Fox. Got through the heaviest part of the base over there, but will drop before she can finish off the base over there. Uh, some bit of time to go back for that. Queen's still alive and moving just fine, though. Queen is not going to be overwhelmed here from the rest of the defenses, but I want this Root Rider to get through and get this last Tesla down so the Queen can work on the cleanup. She'll get one of them down. The other Tesla is one shot right now. The Root Rider will step in and it'll handle it. The Queen will get the cleanup done over to the left, and it looks like he does got it under control here. No issues, but a little bit slower than they'd like when they take down Kazuma. I don't want any confusion about the teams that are remaining. We saw a lot of teams on the boards there, but those are on the far left side still working their way through the bracket. There still are a lot of teams, as we can see, that have dropped out of the lower bracket, but are waiting for opponent because the lower bracket has to play through twice as many rounds as the upper bracket. So it's going to take a little while for us to catch back up. So people asking about Tribe Gaming, they're sitting right there waiting for the, uh, the winner in that match there with Imperium Titans and whatever that team 54 is. But let's dive in. Gaku now in for Navi. We got a uh, queen immediately deploying with healers over the right. Pops her ability to get a frozen arrow and a healer pop and move across the right side. Riders move across the far left there. Siege Barracks into the far, far left side of the base there. Siege Barracks be seems to be the fastest way to take these bases down. We don't see them really use any other siege machines when they're trying to move fast. When we do see them with an opportunity to go and slow things down, they almost always switch over to the Flame Flinger to try to get more value and take advantage of not having to worry about time. Obviously, time is the biggest factor until we see somebody miss. Skeletal Spells down south in the bottom corner here. Overgrowth locks out the core. The Queen surviving just fine for now. There's one more Rage, one more Freeze. He can lock out the core there again after he has the Overgrowth wear off. But he needs to get as much as he can cleared here so we can turn back on Overgrowth the moment he wakes up there. And there it is. It's right in position. Everybody steps back in. And with the Town Hall finally now able to pop its poison, it's not going to affect anything. It's going to be a march right into it. And look at the attack time here again. Down under a minute and a half on this one. We'll check the times and we'll see exactly where the teams stand compared to each other. But I think they're very, very close to each other right now. I think we're only a few seconds apart. Let's check and verify. But looks like six seconds split in the favor of Navi. So about 18 seconds total. Here's our score updates across the board. We're really paying attention to Millicent MG versus Synchronic. The rest of them, obviously important for those teams, but the most likely teams to be able to see next weekend are really guaranteed to see next weekend. And fighting for those number one spots are the ones we're focusing on. And we saw that Synchronic was holding a very, very big time advantage. 35 seconds right now over Millicent MG. So we'll see what happens with that one here. But let's get into loop as we go into our fourth exchange. Once again, Root Riders 
Valkyries, Super Barbarians, the King over the left there with the jump. He'll make his way forward there, but sucking an Ice Golem for a moment. Up his Giant Gauntlet. Nice if he can get past the freeze there before he got froze, or before he popped his Giant Gauntlet, but that's fine. He'll move forward there and give the tanky for the Queen. Valkyries take the jump as well. The Valkyries refuse to follow the Root Riders, and they will get over there in front of the Queen and get some push towards the core of the base. King's taking the left side of the shot. Keep the damage off of the main pack. And the main pack will get into the Tornado Trap and will be stuck for a moment. He's slowing down here. Slowing down as he's going to take the Eagle Artillery Strikes there. Ending on the Eagle Artillery is very dangerous here, in my opinion. I feel like when you end on the Eagle Artillery, when the Root Riders all group up like they were... Then they were taking scattershot fire. They were taking multiple rounds of Eagle Artillery shells. And then they all took the Town Hall Blast and Poison together. And he ultimately lost every single Root Rider as a result of that. That's a very, very big problem to slow him down here. And potentially a mistake. But maybe he was nervous about going through the Town through the Eagle Artillery for some reason. I'm not really sure what would deter him from doing so. But still, even with that in mind, he still gets it done. A minute and 26 seconds with no Root Riders standing at the end. Synchronic missed. Oh, rip the dream. Synchronic. General X, our newest world record holder for the fastest attack time in all of Clash of Clans esports with a 90% two star. And Synchronic, it doesn't matter how fast you go, a single mistake, and that could end their path. That may push them into one of the lower seeds obviously like we talked about they're still gonna make it through to next weekend so this match is just to decide who is seed one and two and who ends up advancing automatically into the second round of next weekend where all the other four teams that ultimately make it through the lower bracket have to take the seed uh three, four, five, and six, and they have to play against each other before they go against the teams that win the upper bracket. So a big a big advantage if you can win this round, and it saves you some trouble next weekend. But we'll see how it all plays out. Looks like Kazuma making his way forward. Overgrowth locks out the town hall, but he needs to get the Eagle Artillery down soon. Does have the defenses around the Eagle Artillery disabled. And so the Hogs out of the Siege Barracks quickly rush in and take it down. And those Hogs uh, just walk right past all those defenses. All right, yeah, at least they clear any potential traps there. No chance for a tornado to slow them down a little bit later. But everybody else in a regroup at the top of the base there as they go to the Teslas. And it looks like they now will go right in. Perfect timing for the Overgrowth to wake up. There's the Freeze. There's the Rage. Push his way in quickly and easily. Overwhelm the core. And that is more than enough to sustain the lead for Navi. One minute and nine seconds. A 69 second attack for Kazuma. We'll keep Navi in the lead. Let's dive into our final exchange. And Anarchia has a lot of ground to make up for. And with Stars getting prepped for his final attack, Navi's looking good to continue their trend of taking top seed. Because remember, they were tied with Tribe Gaming to take number one seed in the ladder as they both went undefeated. And Arkia was a little bit further down, not too much further down to the rankings there, but they obviously are our defending world champions, so they have that going for them. But he does the get to the core of the base here, the jump off to the left side to get the king in. The queen follows the root riders into the base there. I guess you could have taken either path. But the world champion starts in the far left side of the base there. Into the core, we get to the town hall. Not a problem to get that down there. And the hogs out of the siege bricks joining from the right side. And moving across, he's got more super barbarians working on the backside cleanup there. Protecting the wizards out there as well. Making sure to get the super barbarians to tank for any cleanup that is moving towards them. And get those defenses down. Obviously, we're going to get everything out of the way as quickly as possible and make so that we don't have to leave the base to get the last couple buildings down. We need to get a little bit of uh, extra pickup over to the side there. He's got a couple of troops over there with the wizards, with the super barbarians. Everybody else keeps on moving. Throws the rest of his cleanup into the very, very end of the path thing down south here. And it looks like it's going to lock in right around a minute and a half. Final time, one minute and 29 seconds for Selenio. And now the bar is relatively low, all things considered for stars. As long as he doesn't make a mistake on this one, I think they're in a really good spot. So, sneak peek. We get the Eagle Artillery get a new level. We got the Monolith get a new level. We got the Clan Castle get a new level, which is adding an extra slot for a Siege Machine donation. That doesn't mean that you can bring two Siege Machines into your attack. It just means that you can get a second one donated to you. Builder Huts also get a new level, and we got the new 
angry jellyfish that can be attached into the dome of one of your heroes to follow along with them and it makes so that for a max level 35 seconds of them becoming a defense targeting troop so my first impressions of it was how can we abuse that with a fireball so here it is with the ward of walk making his way forward throwing a fireball skipping all the trash and within that 35 seconds he can quickly advance his way into the base and he can throw that fireball taking out important defenses and then thin it out there because so he is under less damage and with one rage invested and a fireball we just wiped out an entire quadrant of the base there and now the 35 seconds is up and the warden is now Gonna continue to then join with everybody else there so no resources are wasted in the process. Now, it's a pretty insane pet right there, but I think that's one of the strong use case scenarios to be able to break it out. Very, very insane new pet right there. Excited to see what these pro players do with it, but looks like our score updates over here are showing that Synchronic was able to get a triple after their miss. So as we come out of this next attack here, we'll see what happens with that. Let's dive into stars. Here we go. The moment of truth. Stars is in. All he has to do is get a decently timed triple. That's it. All you got to do is triple. All you got to do is clutch the war and you get a number one or two seed. Wait, what? Oh, what? <laughs> stars. stars, are we out here messing around? Are we throwing fireballs in a match like this? I mean, and the Super Archer Bomb? What? Stars. This feels like a big risk, but it feels like it's working as well. All right, let's see what he can do from here. Death out the core. Super Dragon over the or regular Dragon over the right there goes down. If there were any heavier troops there, it looks like they were lured out of the way or dealt with by the Super Archers. They wipe out the interior of the core. And now... He can start to move his way across the left side. Lalo just swarms every single side of the base there, being attacked simultaneously. He's used almost a minute there on that setup, but he's got time to work with. And with the amount of time that Narki was spending on their attacks, it does give him a little bit of wiggle room. But my goodness, stars. <laughs> I have not... I've been talking about how people should be using this attack with the fireball since the release of the fireball. I still hadn't seen anybody actually do it because everybody's using Rune Riders. So it is nice to see stars putting my theory crafting to the test and doing it on the biggest stage in Clash of Clans Esports. Let's go. Okay, Milsim MG able to lock in their win. There it is. Milsim MG and Navi are now in an equal footing. Let's actually uh, pull up our look at the uh, bracket so you can get an idea of what it's going to look like next weekend. Navi will move on. And they will claim either seed one or two. They're equivalent for next weekend. The other two teams, Anarchia and Synchronic, will take seed three or four. They're all basically equivalent. They're going to fall into a qualifying position, but they will have to face off which with, with whatever team ultimately emerges out of the lower bracket.